Good morning, everybody. Good morning, John. And a special welcome to those who are at home looking at the service via social media. Would you please stand. Grace, mercy, and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ be with you all. And also with you. First hymn this morning is hymn number 645. Father, hear the prayer we offer.
whose Son was revealed in majesty before he suffered death upon the cross, give us grace to perceive his glory, that we may be strengthened to suffer with him and be changed into his likeness from glory to glory, who is alive and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. 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 Please be seated for the reading.
take a seat as we uh, think and reflect and prepare to reflect on God's word. Father, we thank you for this morning. We thank you, Father, for uh, those who have already gathered in our church hall, our children, and worship there. And we thank you now uh, for the opportunity to worship here. And we thank you, Father, for your word. And we pray now, Lord, that the words that you put on my lips would be of you and our hearts would be open to hear. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Would you know... I I said that it was going to be, uh, it would be a brief sermon this morning because uh, we're, we have baptism and communion in the same service. But I have to start with uh, an extra Bible reading, which is the Old Testament reading for today. And uh, if you listen into the story, you'll hear about a man by the name of Naaman who um, didn't follow directions and then he did follow directions. So, uh, if you just listen into this, he, he was a, a great uh, general in the, the army. And it's from two kings. Now, Naaman was a commander of the army of the king of Abram. He was a great man in the sight of his master and highly regarded because through him the Lord had given victory to Aram. He was a valiant soldier, but he had leprosy. Now bands of raiders from Aram had gone out and taken captive a young girl from Israel and she served Naaman's wife. She said to her mistress, if only my master could see the prophet who is in Samaria, he would cure him of his leprosy. Naaman went to his master and told him what the girl from Israel had said. By all means go, the king of Aram replied. I will send a letter to the king of the Israelites. So Naaman left, taking with him 10 talents of silver, 6,000 shekels of gold, and 10 sets of clothing. The letter he took to the king of Israel read, With this letter I am sending you my servant Naaman to you, so that you can cure him of his leprosy. As soon as the king of Israel read the letter, he tore his robes and said, I am God, I can kill and bring back to life. Why does this fellow send someone to me to be cured of his leprosy? See how he is trying to pick a fight with me. When Elisha, the man of God, heard the king of Israel had torn his robes, he sent him a message. Why have you torn your robes? Have the man, Naaman, come to me and he will know that there is a prophet in Israel. So Naaman went with his horses and his chariots and his men, and he stopped at the door of the prophet Elisha. Elisha sent a message to him saying, Go wash yourself seven times in the river Jordan, and your flesh will be restored, and you will be healed. But Naaman went away angry and said, I thought he would surely come out to me and stand and call on the name of the Lord his God, wave his hand over the spot and cure me of my leprosy. Are not Abana and uh, the, the rivers of Damascus better than all the waters of Israel? Couldn't I wash in them and be cleansed? So he turned and went off in a rage. Naaman's sermons went to him and said, My father, if the prophet had told you to do the great thing, would you have not done it? How much more then when he tells you, wash and be cleansed? So he went down and dipped himself in the Jordan seven times as the man of God had told him and his flesh was restored and he became clean like a little baby boy. Thanks be to God for his word. Amen. <coughs> now, I uh, read you quite a, a long story there about an army general by the name of Naaman. Now, I come to church um, with something that um, I'm rather rather partial to, but I don't need it that often. Uh, it's, it's angel delight. Now, um, and during the week I was uh, looking through the cupboards in the house for a snack and uh, I was hoping that there'll be something in the treat box, but it was empty. And I looked in the freezer for ice cream and there was just a little tub of um, Drain's ice cream half eaten and a little name written on it, this belongs to, and I'll not tell you who. <laughs> so I couldn't eat 
the, the ice cream. And uh, so I went to the cupboard and uh, there was the, the angel delight. Now, we haven't really bought this too often, uh, but and it's a long time. And, uh, and I remember it back when, we, when I did scout camps, when I was a leader of scout camps. I also remember it from when I was a leader on scripture union camps. It's so easy to make that children can make it. And uh, it's something you can put into the hand of a child and a child can, uh, once they know the directions, a child can make it. And it, it's very, very nice. That's my particular favorite butterscotch uh, uh, flavor. Uh, I think it's the original salted caramel. <laughs> it's really, really nice. <laughs> Before we got salted caramel, we had butterscotch. But anyway, I, I, but I have to remind myself. So I went to the back of it, and uh, it says here, 300 mils of um, milk into a bowl, chilled milk. And I'm sure the last time I read one of this, it would have been in pints. Um, and then it goes on to say, add the angel of light and whisk until light and creamy. And then it goes on to say, Leave to set for five minutes before you will uh, get to eat it. And um, how simple is that? It's, I mean, it's so simple, isn't it? And uh, you, you, you don't even have to. You don't even have to put it on the stove or put it in the oven or anything. You just have to mix it up. Even somebody who not able, like me, not too good in the kitchen. That that is is very simple. Follow the directions. And that's, and that's what I want us to think about today, following the directions and uh, even the very simple directions sometimes we choose not to follow. And in the Bible, in the Bible today that as I've just read, you have this man called Naaman and um, uh, who, had, uh, who was a great uh, general, a great commander, uh, was obviously very able to give directions to soldiers very obviously able to lead people, um, but uh, he, he had difficulties in following simple instructions himself. He was the commander of the army of the king of Syria. He had uh, won many ba battles, and uh, he had an illness called leprosy. And, um, and uh, he said, uh, you know, he had this, this uh, woman who was a servant in his household who was an Israelite and she said, um, I know uh, you, you could be healed and uh, go to, to Israel, Israel and see uh, one of the, the prophets. So Naaman's uh, boss, the king, uh, sent him with a letter to the king of Israel and that's how it all uh, happened. And the king of Israel didn't know what to do, uh, but the prophet, the prophet of God by the name of Elisha heard about this letter coming from the other king and he knew that he could heal Naaman. So Naaman was called to go to his house and so Naaman went to his house and as we heard in the, the, the message or the, in the scripture reading, um, Elisha wouldn't even come to the door and uh, he sent somebody out to meet Naaman. And, and the message that was sent out was, go and wash yourself seven times in the River Jordan and you will be healed. And what we heard was um, a, a very simple set of instructions, even more simple than what's on the back of this packet of angels of light. And, and when you have followed such uh, simple steps, you will be instantly healed. And uh, it sounds that simple, but Naaman took grave offense. This man wouldn't even come out to speak to me. Uh, he thought Elisha uh, would, would place his hand on him or wave his hand over him and he would be, be better. So Naaman refused to do what Elisha said. Thankfully, uh, Naaman uh, was convinced uh, to go back uh, to, uh, or not to go back, but to do what Elisha told him. So he went to the River Jordan and he dipped himself in it seven times and then he was completely healed. Uh, he followed the, the directions that were given eventually. And you know, um, that's really what I would really want us to go away from here today. Uh, and, and that is that the directions that we're given by God 
are usually very simple, aren't they? Uh, sometimes they can be very challenging to, to live out, but the directions that we get from God are uh, usually very simple. And sometimes um, we're willing to try almost anything else uh, rather than follow what God would have us do. And uh, God's word tells us uh, that within it, there is the solution to all life's problems. And when I say solution, I don't necessarily mean that, uh, like in this case, he was healed of a, healed of a dreadful illness. Sometimes uh, the solution will be somewhat different. Maybe the healing won't come. Maybe the healing will come in another way. Uh, maybe somebody's soul will be healed as opposed to uh, a physical impairment. And, uh, uh, and they will come into a right relationship with God. And, uh, but it tells us in the Bible that we should uh, seek to follow the directions. And I wanted to share with you, and I have a few here, some thoughts on taking uh, direction from, from God. And you'll be pleased to know that I'm not going to read all 25 verses here. <laughs> but do you know, uh, if you follow God's direction, I think the more that we follow Jesus, uh, the more we will feel his love uh, uh, and direction in our lives. The more we set out to read his word and, um, and follow that in our lives. Here's, here's a few. Um, it's a, a, in the Bible, it tells us in Jeremiah, I know that people's lives are not their own. It is not for them to direct their, their steps. That is telling us uh, in Jeremiah 10 that... Uh, we may think we're in control, but God is saying, come to me and let me direct your life. Um, and we can pray for direction. You and I can talk to God and we can ask him uh, for direction. This is out of uh, Philippians. Do not be anxious about anything, but in everything by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, let your request be made known to God and the peace of God which passes all understanding will guard your hearts and minds in Christ. So you and I can ask God. So uh, God directs our lives. You and I can ask him for that direction. And um, one here, a verse that's a particular uh, favorite of mine, and it calls on us to trust in uh, with all our heart, soul, and mind. I remember in uh, the earlier part of my life when I was having uh, real quandaries, what am I gonna do with my life? And I went to a minister and the minister said, you know what, I can't tell you, but God can tell you. And this is the verse that he gave me from Proverbs 3. Trust in the Lord with all your heart and do not lean on your own understanding. In all your ways, acknowledge him and he will make straight your paths. Do you know, and isn't that amazing? God will make your Pastor. And in Proverbs, it also warns us about following our own directions. Proverbs 14, there's a way that appears to be right, but in the end it leads to death. Uh, and, that, and that is saying, when you're making choices, uh, talk to God, pray to God, ask for his guidance, and, uh, and keep on the path that he sets you. Um, uh, because it's so important and the path that he will set you it can come to you in and through reflecting on God's word and this is going to be my last my last verse for this morning because I have 25 but that's probably about five now but Psalm 119 verse 105 your word is a lamp to my feet and a light to my path um, isn't that isn't that right if you seek the direction from God he will light and illuminate the path for you. And those, those wrong choices, uh, hopefully you will not make them because you will see the way to go. Uh, and I can't just, I just can't resist one more. For I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord, plans for your welfare and not for evil, to give you a future and a hope. God wants to direct you. And as I've just read from his word, it is as simple as what's on the back of that packet, isn't it? It is that simple. He's asking you to uh, 
Acknowledge that he is in control of your life, that he wants to give you direction. He's asking you to speak about, uh, speak to him in prayer, and because uh, he has a perfect, a perfect plan for for you. And I'd encourage you to, to look into God's word, to come to church, to pray, and in all those things, engage with He who loves you as you are and wants to bring you on a journey uh, to wholeness in this life and the promise of life eternal. Let's pray. Father, we thank you for the directions you give us in life. We pray, Father, that uh, you would enable us through the power of your Holy Spirit that work within us uh, to follow those directions and that we would indeed uh, find uh, fullness of life in the here and now with the promise of life eternal. In Jesus' name, Amen. Amen. Now, I'm uh, just turn to my order of service here um, and uh, see, uh, I think actually we're, we're, we've come to, to the baptism and um, at this point, if Roman, you wouldn't mind just pausing that uh, and uh, as the as Tommy and his family go back to their pew at the end of the baptism, we now uh, turn to the words of the, the peace. We are the body of Christ. By one spirit, we are all baptized into one body. Let us then pursue all that makes for peace and build up our common life together. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you. We now turn to our offertory hymn today, which is Blessed Assurance. Christ our Passover has been sacrificed for us. 
Therefore, let us celebrate the feast. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We give thanks to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. Father, Lord of all creation, we praise you for your goodness and your love. When we turned away, you did not reject us. You came to meet us in your son, welcomed us as your children, and prepared a table where we might feast with you. In Christ, you shared our life that we might live in him and he in us. He opened wide his arms upon the cross, and in love stronger than death, he made the perfect sacrifice for sin. Lord Jesus Christ, our Redeemer, on the night before you died, you came to the table with your friends. Taking bread, you gave thanks, broke it, and gave it to them, saying, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Lord Jesus, we bless you. You are the bread of life. At the end of supper, you took the cup of wine, gave thanks, and said, Drink this all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in remembrance of me. Lord Jesus, we bless you. You are the true vine. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Dying, we destroy our death. Rising, we restore our life. Lord Jesus, come in glory. Holy Spirit, giver of life, come upon us now. May this bread and wine be to us the body and blood of our Savior, Jesus Christ. And as we eat and drink these holy gifts, Make us to know our need of grace, one in Christ our risen Lord. Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, blessed Trinity, with your whole church throughout the world, we offer you this sacrifice of thanks and praise, and lift our voice to join the song of heaven, forever praising you and saying, Holy, 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 Holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory, Hosanna in the highest. Thanks be to you, our God, for your gifts beyond works. Amen, amen, amen. As our Saviour Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. The bread which we break is a sharing in the body of Christ. We be many are one body, for we all share in the one bread. Draw near with faith and receive the body of our Lord Jesus Christ, which he gave you, and his blood which he shed for you. Remember that he died for you, and feed on him in your hearts by faith, with thanksgiving. Amen. And as we come to communion today, I would remind you uh, that uh, the, the Church of Ireland has asked to go back to the Common Cup. Uh, there are a a, a small number of individual cups for those that, of you who feel uh, that you would like to receive them at a small individual cup. If you could come, so we can distinguish as clergy here, uh, if you would come at the end, that would maybe help us to distinguish between you and those who are okay with the common cup. Also, can I say, uh, everyone is welcome at the Lord's table. So if you're visiting in church today um, and you know Jesus, please do come uh, forward uh, to receive. Uh, it is the Lord's table. Uh, it is not for us to judge. It is the Lord who welcomes people with open arms uh, to, to his table. Uh, let's now uh, share together uh, in the, the sacrament. Thank mm -hmm. you.
help us to grow in love for one another and come to the full maturity of the body of Christ. Amen. Amen. Almighty God, we thank you for giving us the spiritual fruit of the body and blood of your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him we offer you our souls and bodies to be a living sacrifice. Send us out in the power of your spirit to live and work in your praise and glory. Throw our service to a close with the words of hymn 443. I have a couple of announcements. That, uh, well, one that I should have made at the start, two that I should have made at the start. Mother's Union, um, if you would like to stay in church after the service, just for a moment, just for a moment uh, to make arrangements for your <coughs> your lunch out Saturday, next, next Saturday. Saturday. And of course, um, next week is. Um, well, it's, it's Valentine's Day on the 14th, um, which is probably uh, well known, obviously, but it's also this year Ash Wednesday falls on the 14th, so we will have an Ash Wednesday service here at 10.30 uh, in the morning on Wednesday morning, and you're of course uh, welcome to that. Next Sunday is the first Sunday in Lent, and uh, again, can I thank those that deliver magazines and as I say, there's quite a lot of you here that I can tell you that your bundles are in the church hall. So thank you for picking those up today and, and getting them out into the parish. They, they t in terms of worship, they'll take us through to Easter, Easter Sunday. So let's now turn to our final uh, act of worship, which is to set, sing hymn number 443. <laughs> Thank you.